the notion that the world should be shifting away from curbing climate warming greenhouse gas emissions is extraordinarily divorced from the basic facts of the present moment. The last three years have been the warmest in recorded human history, and by a considerable margin, rather than slowing, as some have claimed, the pace of warming has likely increased in recent decades rather than decreased. Indeed, the amount of heat trapping carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere is currently at its highest level in millions of years, and last year's year-on-year -year increase was the largest we've ever observed. What was once merely a projection about a potential future is now a reality in the form of increasingly extreme heat waves and torrential downpours that directly threaten human lives and economies alike. Ecosystems from tropical coral reefs to subarctic boreal forests face critical risks from months-long marine heat waves and extreme wildfires, respectively. And global sea levels, for their part, have risen at an increasing rate as polar ice sheets begin to melt faster with each passing decade. Those are, quite simply, the facts of the matter. The real question then becomes, what are we going to do about it? Real progress, as many have correctly noted, has undoubtedly been made in the clean energy sector in particular, to the point that renewable energy is now often the cheapest form of electricity at many points around the world. But that's not nearly enough, because projected future increases in greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere from ongoing human emissions in the coming decades are still on track to approximately double the amount of warming we've seen so far. Yes, double. And the impacts of that would be profound, much greater from the, than from the earlier increment of warming, and that would severely test, if not go beyond our capacity, to keep pace through climate adaptation. The worst consequences of this would indeed, and as others have emphasized, befall the global poor, but it would be dangerously hubristic to assume that wealthy nations would avoid human suffering and great economic harm in a two to three degree Celsius warmer world. So now is in fact the time to redouble our efforts to address climate change, certainly not to shy away from our global responsibilities. The harms of our current trajectory have never been clearer. Lifting those with the least resources out of poverty, as well as ensuring food and water security, and yes, also access to energy, those are all unquestionably urgent and laudable priorities. Full stop. But when it comes to the perceived tension between climate adaptation and climate mitigation, the simple reality is this. It's not a binary choice. In fact, we can and indeed must do both as much and as quickly as we possibly can.